All right, good morning. I was um, thinking of these two scriptures this morning. Uh, and this is really one of the... Good morning, by the way. Um, glad you're with us. This is two of the many scriptures uh, that will kind of give you a, a reason why we do this on Saturday morning. We have this prayer meeting. Colossians 4, it says, Devote, your, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well. So Paul is asking the Colossians to pray for him and, and his associates that were uh, ministering, that God may open to us a door for the word, that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ in which I have been imprisoned in order that I may speak it clear in the way, in order that I may make it clear in the way that I ought to speak. And then uh, in Ephesians 6, Paul asks the Ephesians, says, pray for me on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. So one of the main things we're here for this morning is to pray for these three services that uh, we have here at Foothills, the services that are going on all over the county this weekend, and specifically we want to pray for my brother Mark, who's going to be preaching. Um, I don't want to go into great detail, but um, there was a big difference here at this church. Mark and I noticed it within like a month. This is like 30 years ago when we started um, when we started a prayer society and, and started these Saturday morning prayer meetings, had people pray, there was a significant difference in what happened in the, in the Sunday morning services. I know I've given this example many times, but real quick here. I, and to, uh, after about two years, I, n not even two years, let's just say about a year, uh, I did an experiment. I preached a message, exactly the same message I had pre preached two years before. And, and I just said, I'm going to preach it word for word, exactly how I did two years prior. Two years prior, we used to sell DVDs, or, I mean, CDs of, of tapes. Yeah, but this is, but um, CDs. And um, two years prior, when I preached that message, no one bought a CD. That weekend, there was a line all the way across the back of the church to buy that CD. Same exact message. That, got it. No, there was, there was an anointing on it. There was an anointing on it, and it touched a bunch of people for one reason, one reason only, is because we were praying. That's one of the things. So from that time on, this um, morning prayer meeting, this is important. We're going to pray in just a few minutes for what's going to happen here tonight and the rest of the weekend. And because of your prayer, because you got up, because you're sitting there with your cup of coffee and you're going to, you're going to pray with your spouse or, or, or pray with us here. God is going to pour out his spirit and power in a way on this service that would not happen if we didn't have this prayer meeting. I'm convinced of it. Um, so don't ever let the enemy think that your presence here with us, praying with us, is just some kind of futile activity or religious activity that doesn't have an effect. People are going to be ministered to. Um, in a way, things are going to happen here at the end of the service. Mark's going to be able to touch people's hearts uh, through what he says in a way that would not happen if we did not have this prayer meeting. Because what we're telling God is, we need you. We can't do this on our own. We need your Holy Spirit here, and God responds to that. So, um, first of all, one of the things that we do at the, the end of this um, morning's prayer meeting that we do every Saturday, is we want to pray with you. We want to agree with you on the, uh, prayer, the prayer needs that you have, the things that you're praying for. So Kevin and I, Pastor Kevin Miller here, our administrative pastor is here praying with me this morning. And um, we want to pray with you. But of course, we can't unless you give us those prayer needs. Pastor David Matrang is right over there and uh, waiting to receive those prayer needs. And the way that we get them is if you... Uh, email to us at prayer at foothillschurch.org, prayer at foothillschurch.org. He'll, he'll get those, and it should be on the screen there. You can also write in the, the, the comments of YouTube or Facebook. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have uh, five, six um, segments of prayer here this morning. The first one is going to, like I just explained, we're going to pray for the weekend services here, 
and also the church in San Diego. And because that's the primary reason we're here, well, we're going to spend more time on that than the other things that we're going to pray for. So it'll be about eight to ten minutes. Um, so I'm going to release I'm going to release you to pray in just a minute, but just kind of give you again a reminder. What are we praying for? We're praying for my brother Mark, who's going to be preaching at all three services. We're praying for the visitors who are coming. We're praying for the, the children's church, Pastor James Harper, and all that happens in the children's church, the preschool, the nursery, um, the altar call at the end, the ministry team, the media, the uh, worship team, uh, the ushers, the, the offering. <laughs> you think as a pastor, the offering, okay? Uh, we got a bunch of classes going on here. There's just a myriad of things that go on here. Uh, that that the visitors would make a connection, that the kids would go into the uh, children's church, come out, and their first thing they would say to their mother and dad, can we come back here? Uh, uh, the bus ministry is, is going to go out uh, and, and pick up kids. And then pray for the church here in San Diego. I know I say this every week, but all of us know people who go to different churches, brothers and sisters, family members, friends, and you know a little bit of something about the pastor that... Uh, uh, pastors, the church that they go to, you know, some of the things that they're going through, pray for that church, all right? Pray for the church in San Diego, all right? So I'm going to release you now. We're going to pray for about eight, nine minutes for the church in San Diego, specifically for the three for the three services that we have here at Foothills, tonight at 630, 9, and 1045. Okay, I bled enough time here. <laughs> That's not really what I was trying to do. I was trying to remind you why we're here. This is important. So let's, let, um, I will, uh, for those of you who may be here with us the first time, when it's time to wrap up this prayer time, uh, I'll let you know. Otherwise, let's go pray. There's a lot to pray for. It's happening here at this service tonight and tomorrow. Let's pray.
Okay. The next thing I want us to pray for is um, David is a Vessels Conference this next week, right? Yeah, it starts Tuesday. Yeah. Vessels Conference starts this Tuesday. It is for young adults. That's kids right out of high school between 18 and 25. It's here. It involves uh, uh, a number of churches. And, and you know, <clears throat> the kids come together. And it's good for them to see <clears throat> that many kids their age that uh, love Jesus. It's not just, especially for the smaller churches, it's not just their little church, but there's all these other, other kids that are trying to follow Jesus. So I'm um, just going to spend a minute or two praying for that. Pray for Pastor David Matranga, who's really the kind of the catalyst behind that. Um, that, uh, you know what, you pray that uh, some new people would come, some new young people from that don't go to church anywhere, and they would meet people there, and, and uh, because of that, they'd start um, coming to one of these uh, youth groups. So let's go start, uh, let's pray for this Vessels Conference. It starts on Tuesday, correct? Correct. For our young adults. Okay, just remember to keep that uh, conference in prayer. It starts on Tuesday. Next thing I'd like you to pray for, prayer for, and uh, you're here because you believe in prayer. Uh, we're still taking sign-ups for the Prayer Society, and um, I don't know what to say here except let's pray uh, ag again um, in the bulletin that we hand out there's something in there that, you know, tell them this is the last week and they can sign up. Um, anyway, um, because the because the lady ha uh, had some things, she was sick and then a friend of hers was sick, we don't have the kind of numbers that I would have at this point. So I really don't know, we really don't know exactly how many people have signed up. I know it's way north of 750, maybe north of 
of 800 even, but it's, it's definitely north of 800. We don't know how many, though. So, um, so that's a lot. So there's two things I'd like you to pray for. Two things. <laughs> so, it's like my... Anyway, I'm, I'm two years... I mean, I'm three years old. And then they put up two fingers. Um, well, where was I? Oh, um, prayer society. Uh, two things I'd like you to pray. First, those people who signed up would be praying th that this commitment they made would stand firm and, and that the devil wouldn't be able to um, accuse them, you know, you're a failure, you didn't do, I mean, if they didn't, if they didn't fail, all right, start again tomorrow. I mean, and then uh, also that those, that we would, that we would pick up um, everybody in this church that God has called to pray, which is everyone, but uh, to even pray for 10 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes a day. So just let's quickly pray for that because this is really the last week and, uh, and then also give myself, uh, Neil, some wisdom and ideas on how to uh, make that prayer society more a part of, of what we do here at the church, okay? So let's go ahead and pray for that, all right? The prayer society. All right. The next subject uh, that I'd like us to pray for, just let you wrap up here, uh, is something that's very concerning to me, uh, anybody in leadership, um, and that's the need of volunteers. Uh, Jesus said to play for workers in the harvest. And I've been doing this, this pastor thing for a long time, um, almost, well, 40 years. Uh, I, I have, I don't know how, how to say that without sounding negative. 
there's a more need for volunteers right now than ever before that I can remember. Let me give you an, an example. Right now in Youth Venture, we need 48 volunteers. 48. Um, we have, and if we don't get more volunteers, we're going to have to cut down on, the, on either the days that we're open or the times that we're open. Um, and I don't want to go into, but, but, that's, but multiply that by just about every single ministry that we have. I don't know what it is, uh, why people are so hesitant to volunteer for things that uh, they used to volunteer for in years past. Um, and I don't, I just was talking to him earlier. I don't want to be this old guy talking about, it was so much better in the times past, you know. These young folks are just a bunch of selfish little minions. No, that's not what's happening here. I'm just looking at numbers. Uh, so Jesus said to pray. And so I'm asking you to pray. What is it? Why? I don't know. I, you know, I was speculating. You know, when we first started this church, it was part of the Jesus movement, and it was part of revival. And yeah, so the times are different, <clears throat> but we still need workers, a lot of them. If we want to reach out to all these kids that we say we want to, people have to volunteer. And, uh, and that takes hundreds of people. So uh, can you want one, to say something? Target? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, you know, we have Next Step Breakfast, uh, first Sunday of every month. And one of the things we talk about is what we believe, how to belong, like get in small groups and really get connected, but serving, building with us. And, the, and that's one of the main keys, volunteering at your church makes it your church. Yeah. So one prayer target that we really could go after are new people, the hundreds of new people that are coming to this church who have not yet taken that step to build with us. Yeah, I was just talking to a, a gentleman earlier. He's sitting right over there. He's only been in church for a short time. He's all already uh, volunteered for, for two ministries. I, we need 100 like him, okay? Uh, we literally need hundreds of volunteers right now. I just gave you one example of youth, youth venture, but that's multiplied over everything because um, we literally reach thousands, not hundreds, thousands of young people every week here. Um, and it just takes people. Uh, I'm spending a lot more time on this because it's, it's really concerning to me. Uh, so, again, don't pray in a negative way. Are these, uh, uh, um, you know, people are more selfish today. Or, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's it. There's something else going on. Maybe it's an attack. Well, of course it's an attack. People maybe are more busy. I don't know. Uh, but let's just pray against it. And just ask, Jesus said, as he saw the people coming, running out of this, that city, uh, uh, look, you know, there's, the, the fields are, are ripe for harvest, but I need, but I need, Jesus was saying, basically, I need people to work in, in that harvest. And he looked at his disciples and said, pray for that harvest. So that's what we're doing. It's pray for workers. And if you're involved in a ministry, pray for that ministry. Uh, you know uh, that, we, that we need some volunteers. So let, let's pray for volunteers, workers for the harvest.
Okay. I'm going to ask you one more time, uh, the last time, if you'd like Kevin and I to pray for some, uh, to pray with you, and then those here and at home to pray with you about a prayer request in your life. This is your shot right now, the last time. S give us that prayer request. We'd love to pray for you. We really would. Um, we'll take the time. We need to. But you, again, got to send it to us. On your screen, there's an email address, prayer at foothillschurch.org. Send it to us there on that, that email address. Uh, also, you can write it in the comments of YouTube or Facebook. Um, before we um, pray for Kevin, I do want to pray for something, and that is just generally I want to pray for the marriages here at the church. <clears throat> I did a message a few years ago, and I'm thinking about uh, maybe doing it again sometime. Is um, <clears throat> There's a book written. Uh, it's called Good News About Marriage in the Church. The church really, compared to the society, we have very few divorces. That shocks people, but when you look, really look at this, the stats, that's the case. If you just look in this church, how many people who regularly go to this church are getting divorced? Very, very small percentage. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, but there are families who are struggling, uh, especially younger folks who start having kids and it causes all kinds of problems and, uh, you know, and I would imagine each and every one of you <clears throat> knows some couples are having some problems. Let's lift them up right now. We have a counseling ministry here. We got home groups. We got home pastors. A lot of things that can help. <clears throat> I remember years ago, um, a lot of the times all Mary and I needed was just to go talk to another older couple who, uh, <clears throat> or just someone else and just... Uh, say, this is how I'm feeling, and Mary goes, this is how I'm feeling, and they go, well, and they kind of straighten us out, and then it was not that we needed counseling. We just needed uh, <clears throat> a brother and sister to, to come alongside of us, and uh, I don't want to say be a referee, but um, yeah, I am. <laughs> so but anyway, let's just pray for marriages in the church. First, I'd like you to uh, praise the Lord that um, we, don't, we don't really see a lot of of divorces here. We really don't. Compared to how many people go here, the thousands of people who, who go here regularly, I mean, how many people actually get divorced is very, very, very small. So um, let's, just, let's just pray for marriages, okay? And you know some that are maybe in trouble, pray for them.
All right, so if you would wrap up. And uh, David's getting those prayer requests, and we'll pray for those in a minute. But as we do every um, Saturday morning, we take one senior staff member, and we pray for them. This morning, it's Pastor Kevin Miller, uh, whose wife, uh, Sylvia, has been my secretary for 30 years, plus 30 years. Um, when she started with me, uh, this is a small church. We're in, the church was an 8,000 square foot building, probably a couple hundred people. Your office is 8,000 square feet now, isn't it, Dave? <laughs> No, but um, anyway, I do have a bigger office than you, I, I, I will admit. You deserve it. <laughs> but anyway, it's not that much bigger. I want you guys to... Uh, it's a lot bigger. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so Kevin, what can we pray for? You, I mean, as a church admin, uh, you got a lot going on. Yeah, and it's exciting. It's For me, I've been here 25 plus years, but this is the most exciting time in the, in the history of the church. This transition has been such an example for other churches uh, that they'd like to model it. And all you have to do is start 10 years before. <laughs> there you go. But I, you know, I was thinking about that this morning because there are so many things going, so, going on. But I, so much, you know, you're, you're as good as the people that, that are working with you, working mm -hmm. for you, and supporting. And so I just like to pray for the department heads of the ministries that I oversee and support. So I, I don't want to forget, but um, I've got um, my good friend Jim Hammonds in Krau Krakow, Poland right now. We share him with the Graham family. So just a safety in his travels and everything for him. Uh, Sandy Rivera just went on vacation, and she handles all of the IT. Sandy Zolman, excuse me. You ever do that? Um, then uh, never. I know, right? Elizabeth, I got the wrong brother. Elizabeth um, is the director of operations now. Elizabeth Church is doing an incredible job. Uh, Don Hiddle is uh, for you safety. You expect me to security. remember all these names? No, right? people are writing them down. Tommy Tomini is writing them down right okay. now. Hey, Tommy. Um, and so uh, then we have. This uh, is the one week that Tommy isn't isn't probably. He'll, he'll watch the he'll watch the rerun. <laughs> anyway, we're going long. Um, in finance, it's Audrey and Connie. Uh, they have so much responsibility there. And then Jan is the mom. Jan is uh, staff support, HR. She's written so many grants for us that have been amazing, as we know. And who who am I missing, Nick? There's some people I'm missing here. I don't know. Okay, Andy Church builds and fixes things, and of course, you guys know Nick did it for 100 years, and we had to give his job to seven different people. <laughs> Who's, hospitality's a big thing. Who's, there we go. So Lisa Neely is coming in and working with Natalia, who's been an absolute gift, and I lost her to the high school ministry. I'm talking to John and Yule about that. But Lisa Neely is back after about 20 years. She used to run it, and if you know Lisa Neely, she's got more energy than all of us, and she loves it, and... It's just Lord's provision. So she was a PE teacher for years. She was. She still stand got stand on those numbers. And she got a coach, PE lady. <laughs> yeah, you, you look at her her license okay. plate. So anyway, there's so much there. Pick one of those and pray hard. So for how many her. grandkids do you have now? Not nearly enough, but 21. Yeah. I passed the Stecklers up and I haven't slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, don't I just know wanted if they you knew to tell. We were in I know because there's constantly a new baby picture in your office. So okay. I just. Just one or two, 21. That's good. Praise the Lord. I'm exhausted and I have four. Yeah, that can do it to you. They're over at my house. They're at the, our house right now. Um, Lord, we want to thank you for Kevin. Uh, you know, Lord, I've told Kevin, uh, I don't know how many years now, Lord, uh, he walked into you know, a situation, you know, anyway, and, and he took over the, the admin's uh, position and became such a help to me. Uh, take such a burden off of me personally, and I will be ever thankful to, for him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, uh, you've heard he's, he's in charge of, you know, the office, what happens there in the office, uh, all that, Lord, uh, the finances. We just pray you give him wisdom, Lord, in d dealing with these different personalities and, and helping them to, to um, do their job the best that they can. Uh, we pray for his wife, Sylvia, their marriage, thank you, Lord, that you brought these two together, and um, that was a real miracle, and uh, it's been, it's been a, a, a blessing for both of them. Um, 
We, th we thank you for all the grandkids. We pray, Lord God, that you would um, just bless the children, the, the marriages, the kids. Uh, Lord, uh, but especially we pray for an anointing as Kevin begins to think about transition. Uh, just like me and everybody else down the road, I mean, we're going to have to fill his, his position, just give wisdom in that as well. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fall on Kevin. We pray for his health. We pray for his marriage. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this brother. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to get the prayer requests here and uh, walking over here, walking out of the camera. You remember how Rush Limbaugh used to go? Yeah. Okay. I used to, never mind. Okay. I got good ones, Dave. You, you, you got good ones? I don't know. I got good ones. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go through two of these at a time. Just um, you pray with us, okay? Tessa, we pray for her, Lord. She needs healing for a brain bleed. We don't have any other information but that. But, Lord, that means she's probably in a hospital somewhere. We pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would fall on Tess right now in Jesus' name. Your healing power would stop this bleeding. Thank you. Natalia is a little baby girl um, with a high fever, so high she's in the hospital. Pray, Lord God, we don't know much about I don't know whose child this is. We pray for this little girl. Pray that you would pour out your spirit. And even now, you would bring down the fever. And, Lord, the parents and those around would know that you're the one who did it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, uh, it's an honor to pray for John and Kurt as uh, they're going to be sharing Sunday night about the revival happening in India. And Lord, when I tell people what I know about what is happening in India, they don't know anything about it and they are blown away how God is moving in revival. It is so incredible. So I just ask people that people would show up to that meeting and get an understanding of the power that you're moving in, signs and wonders and salvations there in India. Bless that. And Father Allen, if this is the Allen I know, I'm bummed. He needs his hip surgery redone. And so Father, even if it's a different Allen, we pray for him. Father, we pray for every single bit of that. I've had friends that have had to have things redone like that, and it's just no fun when you think you've reached a, a finish line. and It's just a starting line. Would you bless Alan, and, and knowing him, would you bless everybody involved so that he would share the love of Jesus with every single one of them, and would you heal him up in Jesus' name? We pray for Andrew, who's got a, a, a job application in the Grossmont Union High School District, and uh, just pray that, um, that he'd be hired. And Lord, if this isn't your best for him, we pray, Lord God, that you would lead him to another job. So ultimately, we just pray, Lord, for employment for for Andrew. Uh, we pray for Danny, uh, whose mother has been praying for him for a long time, we, for his salvation. We pray for Danny's salvation, but now that he's hurt his feet in some way, it doesn't say here, but he's, he's been injured. His mother asked that this, this um, injury would, you'd work it in such a way that he would look up to you, Jesus. We pray, most importantly, we pray for Danny's salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray for Britton, too. It's a young guy who has been a prodigal for about a year, but he just lost his job. And, Father, we know how you use all things to your glory. And I just ask, Father, uh, I join with the person who's, who's bringing up this prayer request that his discomfort in losing his job will lead him back to Jesus. Also, Father, we stand with Jerry. He asks that his work would continue this year. He might be on a contract or something like that, but ask that you'd prosper him, Father, that he would be indispensable and that he would continue to provide for him. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Jeff and Christy. Um, I don't know if this is the mother, the father, the friend, but Lord, uh, they've walked away from you. And as a result of that, uh, they've, it looks like they're giving up on their marriage. Uh, or their marriage is in trouble, how often that's the case. Um, but Lord, we, we pray for Jeff and Christy, and we pray for their marriage, we pray for their relationship with you. Just ask Holy Spirit that your conviction would, would fall upon both of them, and they would recommit themselves to you. 
Lord, I pray that they'd find themselves in church this weekend and find themselves up front being prayed for. Just heal this marriage. Uh, we pray for Joe's daughter, Sarah, uh, and her, her, her new one month, well, her son, who uh, was born one month early. We pray for healing. We pray for wisdom for the doctors. But we pray, Lord, that this, um, th this little boy, uh, his lungs, those are probably the last thing that we pray for his lungs. We pray for this uh, premature uh, little baby that there would be no long-term effects. Uh, and we pray that um, for Bev, uh, that, she, well, there's not much here, Lord, but we there's, there's a breathing problem. So we pray for her and pray, Lord God, you would open up her lungs. Whatever the problem is with, with um, Bev, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon her. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father Val says that as she's going in on, for a biopsy on Monday and that the, it appears to be cancer, Father, first of all, we join together and pray that it would not be cancer. Father, it would be something insignificant. We pray that you just invade that and heal her and make her whole and uh, that you would give her great peace. Um, the person who brought this up says to pray for peace, salvation, and healing, and we say yes to that. Father, we pray for Israel and everything that's going on over there. Father, just at a conference last night talking about Israel and how inextricable your grace is over there. There are people, Father, both Arab and, and Hebrew Jew who are praying for you to come back, Jesus. They're praying for you, and we know what you said about that, that that's what you needed to have happen, that they would be hungry for you, they'd be after you. So we pray for Israel in Jesus' name. And Lord, Father, oh. uh, we pray for Paco for healing from stent from uh, his surgery. There's complications there, so we ask that you'd invade that and make him whole and healthy and everything would go well with him. And we pray for not only Brian's migraines, who I know Brian with bad migraines for years, but all of those people that suffer with migraines. There's so many right now. Father, would you just wave your hand and take that blight away from the people that have been suffering with it for so long, especially Courtney, my friend. Would you take migraines away from her forever? You done? I am. Okay. Lord, um, thanks for bringing us together. Lord, we're a little bit over, so I'm just going to thank you. Thank you for each person that's praying. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do tonight and tomorrow here at this church and your church all through San Diego. Thank you for the lives that are going to change. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. I Amen. hope to see you tonight or tomorrow. God bless you.